All right, uh, we'll also look at Trump. We'll ask him about the latest Wall Street Journal uh, NBC News poll. It shows he's in the lead, 25%. Carson, 22 Rubio in third place, 13 Cruz, Bush, Fiorina, they follow. They are in single digits. The National Review's Catherine Timp is here. Looks to me like, well, he, they are. Mm -hmm. Trump and Carson, they're pulling away from the rest of the pack. They're the non-politicians, yeah. and they've got nearly half the vote here. Right. People are sick of the political establishment. That's become very clear. And I think another thing is people are kind of sick of vanilla, boring GOP candidates that aren't that fun to watch. Trump and Carson, even though Carson's a little slower paced, <laughs> it's your watch a lot slower paced, yeah. more so than anyone I've maybe ever met. Uh, uh. <laughs> but you are wondering, what are they going to say? Are they going to say something that maybe I've been thinking that everyone's too afraid to say or something that's going to be interesting? They're fun to watch. People are involved in politics that might not have been before. If you watch a presidential news conference and you look at President Obama answering a question, right. that's a 10, 12 minute D uh, re response. Sure. Mm -hmm. You look at Donald Trump, yeah. <laughs> and he gives you 30, 45 seconds, bang, right at you. That's he what he does. Still holds and the attention. People watch. Yeah. Right, exactly. We're living in the era of the sound bite right now. People want those quick little sound bites that are going to be on Twitter. They're going to say, oh, he said this. And then either they'll just like internalize it or they might even look in for more. What's yeah. remarkable to me, three weeks into October, we all laughed when Trump first jumped in. He's still there. He's still leading. Who the would last, have predicted that back in July? Who would have said that? Yeah. Right. For the no last way. 99 days, I believe that's accurate, mm. last 99 days, Trump has led every single national every poll. Single. Every single one of them. He's right. been in the lead. Incredible. We A also have to admit that we maybe don't know what's going to happen because nothing like this has ever happened before. Right. So that's there's true. really no way to <laughs> know. I'm not and afraid to admit that. he's on the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let, let's switch to the Democrat side. Same poll, Wall Street Journal, NBC. Hillary Clinton... Now, she has a commanding lead on the other side of the fence. She got 49%. Sanders, 29%. Joe Biden, will you look at that? Joe Biden, 15%. Yeah. Ashley, we've been hearing that he's running. Oh, haven't we? What are the sources for Well, this? yesterday it all got really underway. Brendan Boyle, Democrat uh, congressman out of Pennsylvania, tweeting that I have, he says what he said in his tweet, I have a very good source that tells me VP Biden will run for prez. All sorts of speculation then ran rampant. Those close to Mr. Biden or his family mm. say yes. One person said he still hadn't had made a decision by yesterday. Some now say by the end of the week. There's a big Democratic dinner coming up the following weekend in Iowa. That is seen uh, as his deadline. Don't forget, he has to be on state ballots by the beginning of November. So time is running out, mm. even if he continues to dither to the last second. As our resident Delawarean, I'm believing <laughs> we'll see Joe in that race. You better hurry up. He's another source. It yeah. reminds me of <laughs> if a, you know, a guy says, I really like you, but I'm just not ready for a relationship right now. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> you got to give up. And that's how I think people might be starting to feel about Joe. Fifteen percent. That, yeah. that, he's that's, down in that NBC yes. Wall Street Journal poll. He's down at 15 and don't forget, Hillary's got the testifying before the Congressional Committee oh. Thursday, oh. so that could be a factor in his decision. Do you think well. we're going to forget that? No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Mr. Biden hasn't. To the markets, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Where are we? Where are we going to open in 25 minutes? We're going to open pretty much flat, down 15 points, maybe. Still well above 17,000. Take a look at Amazon. Then this is pre-market, and Amazon stock is not going to be affected by this news, but listen to it. They're going to hire 100,000 people for the holidays. Uh. Now, that is a suggestion, maybe, that online selling is going to be pretty good versus bricks and mortar. Amazon now at 573. Mm. Going the other way, IBM. Whoa, disappointing investors again, and down goes that stock pre market. Is this, DR Barton's here, is this a lumbering, stumbling giant that can't get its footing, can't get back on track, a spent force? That's pretty strong, isn't it? That's pretty strong. <laughs> oh. Four weeks ago, Stuart, you and I sat here and talked about IBM and their state of decline. Then they'd had 13 straight quarters of revenue decline. Today, we tack on number 14. Yes, they are a giant in decline. They are doing some things to try to revitalize the business, moving to the cloud, moving to software off of local machines, and moving to this big artificial intelligence push all of which is going to take some time. Yeah. IBM's not the place to put new money to work right now. It's going to continue to decline till they get some better footing with these businesses that are less than 25% of their total revenue. But you're telling me that for three and a half years, 
they've had less money coming into them. Quarter to quarter, every three single and quarter, years. three and a half years, Stuart. It is a giant decline. Down it goes. All right. Next story. To Canada's election. Whoa, here's a shock. Liberal Party leader Justin Trudeau defeating Conservative Stephen Harper. Trudeau's party now has a majority in the Ottawa Parliament. This is a big shift, Ash. Huge shift. To me, this is like a, a change in administration in America, going from Republican yes. to Democrat. Yes. Political shift. Very much. The Conservatives are now out in Canada, the Liberals are in. His uh, campaign message was tax the rich boost government spending. Does that sound familiar to some candidates <laughs> that in was this his country? Slogan? That was his slogan, no. yes. Don't forget, they don't have term limits uh, in Canada. And uh, Stephen Harper, the Conservative who was just booted out, he was going for a fourth term. Mm. And sometimes when you have a long True. sitting government, there's just a desire for change. But this is a radical shift so in policy. Tax the rich and spend more government money. Yes. But you've got to remember, Canada, I think, has been in near recession for six months. It dipped months. into slight recession, they which hurt Harper kind of, in the, in the election. But they don't have the kind of debt problem that we've no. got. So they can, I guess, go into a, bit, a little bit of debt to forget, spend that Trudeau money. Trudeau is the son of Pietro Trudeau, the iconic uh, name in Canadian yeah. politics. He does support, by the way, the XL pipeline. He does? He does. <laughs> yep. Well, there's a difference from there Bernie Sanders. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Now this, the Star Wars hype machine. Whoa, <laughs> it's in full bore. Jolene Kent has the story in case you missed it. I'm not sure how you could have missed it anyway. Yeah, seriously, not if you were watching Monday Night Football. The new Star Wars trailer dropped last night, and it was just huge. Social media users went crazy over the new clip, with some people tuning in to Monday Night Football just to see it. But no Luke Skywalker that we saw. There may be some clues, though. Tickets went on sale immediately afterward, and the demand crashed popular movie sites like Fandango. Users experienced loading issues and timing out on AMC's theater site. And of course, no surprise, where can you get these tickets? eBay. Some are going for $400, Stuart. <laughs> and the movie doesn't even come out for another two months on December 18th, but already looking like a big victory for Disney, which bought Lucasfilms $4 billion 2012. I know, you're over it. No, 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 it's not it's bad. It's a big I, deal. I, I wanna, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I want to ask Kat about this. Um, is it possible that this social media um, extraordinary reaction is being manipulated to some degree by Disney. They want to hype it up. Absolutely. You know, they're going all out to hype this thing. Am I being manipulated? And it definitely worked. A lot of people were manipulated. I'm not really a Star Wars person. I don't really like watching, you know, like space nerds poke each other with sticks. I don't, whatever, <laughs> I get it. But I said, I criticized Star Wars in a tweet yesterday and oh. people were oh. coming I after me allowed. as if I threatened to kill yeah. their families. <laughs> so it definitely worked. The the hype was ridiculous. I mean, people were like, I hate you now. I, I used to like you, and no. it's over. Unfun but they're still but following you, which is funny, right? Yeah. Oh, but they were threatening yeah. not to, which always always makes me want to change my point of view when somebody threatens to unfollow me. Oh. That's how you really get me going. Look, Disney is doing this for one serious reason. Going to the movies is actually not that popular anymore, even if it's Star Wars. Yes, there's a lot of momentum, but the pressure is on Disney right now to okay. perform. Form. So they've got to do this, and we've got well, to call them out. Star Wars. <laughs> right? They did a nice right, they'll job. Do they'll do it with Star Wars. Next case, everybody. <laughs> Jeb Bush hitting back at Donald Trump.